Okay, today we're excited to have presenting today, Carrie Winbill Rojas. Carrie is our Associate Director for Urban and Community IPM with UCIPM. She's also an Urban IPM Advisor for Yolo, Solano, and Sacramento Counties. She's a busy woman. As Associate Director, Carrie provides leadership and coordinates communication and educational efforts to address urban pest issues around homes, structures, landscapes, gardens, schools, and public areas. We're so happy to have you here to join us today to talk about this. You may now share your slides and begin. Thank you, Belinda. I will bring up my slides right now. And there we go. I am very excited to be here and talking about this too. Um, we have been uh, posting uh, Easter egg hunt on our UCIPM blog for a couple years, and it's always really fun. We post the, um, the, pictures and give it a couple days a week and let people answer it. So we thought we'd turn it into a webinar uh, this year um, to make it a little fun as we move into our spring breaks and our Easter and Passover holidays to um, share with you some information about um, the different kinds of eggs that you might see and um, how to hopefully identify some of the insects and and determine whether they are friends or foe in the garden. And so um, I am going to today talk about lots of different eggs and show you lots of different eggs. And we're hoping that this will be uh, fun and educational for you. Um, I do realize, and I hope you realize that there are millions of uh, insects out in the world and we cannot show you a picture of everything and every situation and you may have a lot of questions so we will um, point you to resources um, at the end of the webinar for where you can find more information so first let's talk about why we are even talking about eggs today um, with pest management identification of insects um, and any pest on your plant or in your house or on your person, on your pet is very important. Before you can do any kind of uh, practical and effective pest management, you need to be able to identify uh, what it is. Many times you can identify an insect, a spider um, or another pest by its eggs, but sometimes it can be really challenging. So today I'll show you some pictures of some of the common pests and some of the different groupings. And since we only have a limited time, again, I'm just gonna show you some of the ones. And I had a lot of fun pulling this together, so I hope uh, you have fun as well. But all insects do begin life as eggs, and they take lots of different forms and shapes and colors and sizes. Uh, and the female lays the eggs usually in an area where the developing larvae or nymphs are going to feed. And I know there's a lot of pictures here and you're wondering what they are if you don't know, and I'm going to go over them for the most part, all of them. But um, first to talk about how insects um, develop, it's a, a good idea to have just some, some basic um, knowledge of what the egg then turns into. And we could have a whole nother webinar on larval ID and pupil ID and adult ID, which maybe we'll do. But um, I wanna focus on the development um, that insects go through uh, and it's called metamorphosis where they change from, from one form to another um, as they go through their whole life cycle. Insects either grow, go through gradual metamorphosis, excuse me, gradual metamorphosis or complete metamorphosis. The gradual metamorphosis is also called incomplete metamorphosis but I find that I trip over myself when I say complete and incomplete so much. So I'm just gonna call it gradual. But they both begin as eggs. So the, um, the insect will start as an egg in both, uh, both kinds of metamorphosis. In the gradual metamorphosis, they go from egg to the nymphal stage, also called the immature stage, and then to the adult. And the nymphs resemble the adults. They don't have all of the, um, the wings and all of the coloring and features, but their body shape resembles the adults. In insects that go through complete metamorphosis, they all start as eggs. And then when they hatch out of the egg, they are termed larvae. Um, larvae is plural, larva is singular. And then they will turn into a pupa and then an adult. 
And in the larval stage, they do not resemble the adult at all. And so that's the two different ways. But regardless, all insects are going to start as eggs. Now, we normally do see the eggs or the eggs are hidden, but there are some insects that interestingly um, give live birth. So aphid species, um, their eggs hatch within the body of the female and the female gives live birth. And the young uh, aphids look just like the adult female and the females don't have um, wings in most parts of their, their life cycle. There are other uh, structures and we're gonna see lots of different ones today. Um, and all insect body parts have terminology, but I'm not gonna get too much into that um, except for with the cockroaches here. But some uh, insects have egg cases uh, or egg sacs. Um, in the egg case terminology, it's called an oothica or an oothica, um, but it's just an egg sac. I think these cockroach egg sacs look like little purses, little clutch purses, and they do open like clutch purses where the larvae will then um, um, emerge out. And so um, here you see there's about 40 different um, immature cockroaches that have emerged out of this egg case. So this is just one way that insects do develop. And you can identify if you are familiar or you have a good resource such as UCIPM materials, you can identify the species of cockroach by the shape, size, and coloring of their, their egg case. Um, so um, it's sometimes hard to know everything, but we have resources to help you out. Now let's get into different kinds of insect eggs in the limited time that we have today, just to show you the variability. Um, and sometimes you'll see an egg um, mass like this where you say, wow, did someone paint that? This is actually how it comes out of the female's body. And in many cases, the eggs will be stuck to a plant um, or some sort of other substrate, the side of, uh, of a, um, a tree, or um, even I've seen eggs stuck on, on screen, window screens. But the female will often um, have this, this um, sticky glue-like substance that when she lays the eggs, this glue comes out as well to help the egg stick to the surface. And um, uh, sometimes you can look at it and say, I know exactly what that is. And other times, as we'll see as, as we go today, it's uh, nearly impossible to identify the um, insect from just one simple little white egg. But this one, if you are curious, is the egg of the harlequin bug. And here's the adult of the harlequin bug. This is a very common pest in um, gardens. They feed on a variety of different um, uh, garden plants. So you may be seeing the adult now and it's already hatched out and gone through its, its development from the egg. But if you see the eggs, this is very um, typical of the, of the harlequin bug. Now we get questions and pictures all the time on what is this? So this is an actual picture that I grabbed off of a, a Facebook group that I'm in in Sacramento. Um, and the photographer put the, the question out there, what are these eggs that I found on my grapefruit? And so people chimed in with their thoughts and it can be really difficult with just a grouping of, of white round eggs to know what they are. So the various thoughts were, well, they're stink bugs, no, they're caterpillars. Are they friend, are they foe? It can be difficult, but there are um, some characteristics of eggs that will allow us to rule something out, even if we aren't completely sure what it is, or you can just wait for them to hatch. Uh, so in that case, people were chiming in that it was a stink bug, but what kind of stink bug? So here is uh, from a paper, um, a different stink bug eggs, and not all of these occur in California, but I thought that this was a really great graphic to share that all of these belong to stink bugs, but stink bugs in different um, genus, uh, genera, um, and some of them, again, we don't have in California. The one we do have in California is up here at the top, um, the, uh, the brown marmorated stink bug that I'm gonna explain in a moment. But you can see just within the stink bug group, the variation in color, and uh, some of these have little, little things that protrude out of them. 
and they may have different numbers in their typical clusters. So whereas this picture had quite a few on there, one of the um, answers that someone gave was that it was the brown marmorated stink bug. Well, the brown marmorated stink bug, which is here, the clusters are, yeah, very typical and they're white. But what's important to know about some insects is um, while they lay their eggs in clusters, some species have specific numbers of eggs that they will lay. So brown marmorated stink bug, the female typically lays 25 to 28 eggs in a cluster. And usually, I would say always, but I won't say always, usually no more than 28. So going back to that other picture, there were more than 28 there and brown marmorated stink bug is not known to lay that many at a time. So we can kind of rule out that it's the brown mar marmorated stink bug, even though um, we're not totally sure what it is. So anyway, you can also see that as the eggs um, um, are ready to hatch out from the, uh, the nymphs within, the color of the eggs might change slightly. So here they're nice and, and white and you can kind of see a cap this is where they will come out. And when they're ready to come out, there's like this little triangle and you can kind of see these two little eyes and then they will pop out of that. And you can see this one is emerging right here where my pointer is. You can see the cap and it's starting to come out. When they come out, they're, they're uh, white in color and then they develop their color. And for the brown marmor distinct bugs, they stay around their egg capsule. And they stay there for, you know, half a day to a day, and then they go off and feed on the plant. Um, one of the answers to that question on Facebook was, oh, it can't be a caterpillar because caterpillars don't lay their eggs in clusters. Well, that's not true. There are thousands of different species of caterpillars, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, but um, they some do lay their eggs in clusters. So for this slide, these are all eggs of different caterpillars, different butterflies. So uh, this is an egg cluster right here in the upper left of the red hump caterpillar, clearly in clusters. And looking at that, it looks just like a cluster of stink bugs. So it can be really difficult. Whereas uh, the bottom picture, this is a cluster of eggs from the California oak worm. And um, this would be found on oak. The other one was on uh, uh, grapefruit. So as I mentioned, the female is going to lay her eggs where there's going to be food. And many insects have a favorite food, a favorite plant, a favorite thing that they eat. Um, they may have a range of plants, but if you find an insect on a plant, then you can go and look at resources on what are pests of that plant so that you can further narrow down what you have. Maybe there are no stink bug pests of, um, of grapefruit, or there's no stink bug pests of, of oaks. And so you can uh, rule out one type of insect and focus on, well, maybe these are going to turn into a caterpillar. Or as I said, you can just wait, <laughs> wait and watch. Uh, the middle pictures show some species of, um, of uh, butterflies and moths that develop uh, from one single egg. So um, these females lay a singular egg, either on the underside of a leaf or on top of a leaf, it, it varies greatly. But these are just two examples of um, uh, eggs that we might find not in a cluster, but singular. So the cabbage worm, which turns into the cabbage butterfly. And then here's the egg of the tomato hornworm um, that we all know and loathe from our tomatoes. Then there are other caterpillars that lay the female lays their eggs in sort of a mass with a, a tuft of hair. So this is a beet army worm. And so there's different eggs within this cluster. You can kind of see them and a little tuft of hair that likely keeps them protected. And then this one is harder to see, but this is an egg mass of the Western tussock moth. And um, the eggs will hatch, the larvae will hatch out of those, go feed. And then the individual larvae will pupate and the pupa look really similar to the egg mass. So um, when you are discovering these things, if you have a magnifying lens or a hand lens, that can help you in identifying what stage of the insect uh, you may be finding, whether it's the egg, the pupa, or um, maybe it's not even uh, an insect egg at all. 
another kind of uh, caterpillar um, that we find uh, lays eggs and egg masses is this fruit tree leaf roller. Here is the caterpillar and they pull the leaf over them. They create some webbing that, that rolls the leaf as the, the name implies. And then here the female has laid two egg masses. Here's one unhatched egg mass and down at the bottom is a hatched egg mass. And you can see the holes that have come out. So the larvae have already come out of their eggs from this mass. And many times the eggs are camouflage. You know, sometimes they're nice and bright and you can see them, but other times they are somewhat camouflaged, either matching the color of mm -hmm. the, uh, the plant, um, the plant material, the fruit, or they kind of look like uh, a blemish on, on the, the tree or the twig uh, or the branch. So one might think that this is um, some, a part of the, the plant that's been sort of scraped off or damaged. But when you look closely, you can see that it's an, an egg mass or you wait for it to hatch out, as I said. Uh, one really good example of a well camouflaged uh, egg is the egg of codling moth. Now you can see here in the upper left, here is the little um, uh, egg that's very easy to miss. And on a different surface, here is an egg that is also very easy to miss because the eggs are translucent until the developing caterpillar or larva inside um, gets to the stage where it develops its head capsule. And that's this black, um, this black dot right here. And you can see it better in this caterpillar. So when the egg is first laying, it's translucent. And as the larva within starts to develop uh, before hatching, you see the, the little black dot and you can see that better in the lower right picture. So um, very easy to miss, but very important in the management of the codling moth in order to get your, your uh, control timing uh, right. Um, but yeah, a lot of eggs are, are uh, camouflaged so that they are protected. This is uh, another fun egg mass that you might be seeing around this time of year or even into the fall. Uh, these are the eggs of the Western box elder bug. And you don't often see the eggs. Uh, they might be on the underside of a leaf. Um, I've seen them uh, stuck to the side of a porch, but anyway, they're going to be near their host and the host of the Western box elder bug are box elder trees, maples, and a few other um, similar plants. But the uh, immature will hatch out of these eggs. And here you can see the life cycle of the box elder bug. So they are really small when they first hatch out of the egg. And they look similar to the adult, but they have not developed all of their color yet. Um, so as they go through their life cycle, they will increase in size to a, a larger immature and then they finally will um, uh, molt and, and develop into the adult. So here's the, the adult. Uh, so those are fun ones to keep your eye out for, and maybe you've seen them. Uh, I saw another question uh, also on Facebook recently, uh, around this time of year, we're starting to see a lot of insect eggs. And so this one here, maybe you've seen it before, these are the eggs of um, some of the uh, katydids, the common katydids. And here is a katydid. If you've never seen one, they look like a grasshopper, but their their wings look like leaves. And so they're very nicely camouflaged. They are uh, related to uh, grasshoppers. They're in the grasshopper order. Um, they have very long legs that are good for jumping. And um, they uh, are starting to become more, more common this time of year. And this is what their eggs look like. They're sort of these flat surfboards almost that are that are overlapping. Um, there's other katydids, other species of katydids that actually lay their eggs into the leaf. So this is the, the fork-tailed bush katydid that lays eggs in the leaf edge. So the egg is actually tucked in there. And this is also very camouflaged. You can see how close up this picture is that um, it'd be hard to see uh, with the naked eye if you weren't looking for it. Um, but you might see 
the adult kitty did, and then you could look around for the eggs. But um, oftentimes, once it's hatched out, you start to see the damage before you see the actual adult. This is a fun uh, egg. And if I had more time, I would show you lots of different pictures of these kinds of insects. Um, this is the egg capsule of the Indian walking stick. The Indian walking stick is just a minor pest in California. It's a non-native. Uh, it feeds on roses and um, some similar plants. So uh, we only have it really in a couple um, isolated areas in California, but some people keep them as, as pets. If you want to have, you know, some, some, um, insect pests, they do reproduce, um, parthenogenically. So without mating. And, um, I've had these as pets before, and I didn't know what their eggs looked like until I had them. Their eggs look just like their frass, their, their droppings. And so when you're cleaning a cage, you have to make sure that you are throwing away the, the frass and not the eggs or else the eggs could then hatch out. And then we could really start to, to um, have problems with this, this pest. But the, um, the egg is of the shape and this little uh, cork sort of pops out and the immature will come out of that. And there are some really great pictures online of uh, different walking stick eggs. National Geographic has this really artsy looking um, graphic that I couldn't use because I didn't have the rights to use it, but um, go look for them. It's it's really um, fascinating. And as I said, the, there's terms for all the different parts of, of eggs and body parts, and it's um, something we won't get too into today. Another very interesting uh, egg is the uh, eggs by the leaf-footed bugs, they are laying by the female in a row. And you might find them on a twig, you can find them on the fruit, you can find them on the side of a wall, a fence, regardless of where you find it, it's going to be close to where there is food, um, the preferred food of the um, developing immatures and adults. So each one of these is an individual egg and you can see the little hole where the uh, um, immature leaf-footed bug will emerge from. Sorry. And then this is what the leaf-footed bug adult looks like. They are starting to be very abundant out in our landscapes now. I had one land on my car yesterday, in fact. And the immatures, I don't have a picture of them, but the immatures are uh, kind of a bright red with, with black legs. Um, but when they start to be uh, get a little older, the uh, the hind legs develop this leaf-like shape, and that's why they're called leaf-footed bugs. So you can look at the immatures, and when they start to develop this little growth uh, in the older stages of the larvae, then you can you can tell um, that it's a leaf-footed bug. Uh, another very interesting insect and its uh, way of reproducing in eggs is the cottony cushion scale. So these are scale insects and the body of the female is actually above this brown line. All this white little um, flutes as they're called hold eggs. So as the females mature and develop, they produce these flutes that get longer, the more eggs she produces. So once you have a really big one, there are somewhere between 200 and 800 eggs within the body here. And if we were to um, watch them hatch or, or come open, the, the flutes, the, the white part sort of opens up and you can see the red eggs here. And that's all the eggs that are the um, future cottony cushion scales. And then they will develop into crawlers and they will go crawl to other parts of the plant and then they will start feeding on the plant. Um, different from, from other scale insects, the cottony cushion scale, they retain their, their legs and their antennae uh, throughout their life, but the females get covered by this, um, this coating. And there are typically no males um, that uh, are produced with the cottony cushion scales either. And then as they um, move out and, and develop um, into older scales, they 
they look like this and then they will start to produce their eggs. And so this body part becomes this kind of body part here as the female produces the eggs. So here is a female, right? These red eggs are actually not her eggs. They are the eggs of a predator. This is the Vidalia beetle. It is a predator of cottony cushion scale. And its red eggs look a lot like the red eggs of the scale itself. Uh, and so the eggs of the uh, Vidalia beetle will be laid by the female on or near the host, its, its food. And then here up at the top, you can see this is a new, uh, newly hatched out larva of the uh, Vidalia beetle. And it's also red in color when it's younger. And so it will start eating the eggs of the cottony cushion scale. And then as that larva develops, so this brown um, rust colored thing in the middle, this is the larva of the Vidalia beetle and it starts to feed on other um, uh, cottony cushion scales that have not fully matured yet. So um, it's all kind of wild. But in a way, the eggs of the Vidalia beetle predator are camouflaged to look like the eggs of the host. So to talk about other lady beetles, um, because there are many different lady beetles out there, the Vidalia beetle is um, a very uh, specific uh, predator that it feeds on only cottony cushion scales, uh, or primarily anyway. The lady beetles as a group, they uh, have um, some eggs that you might be able to identify by species and some that you may not be able to identify to species, but you could probably uh, identify them as lady beetles or ladybugs. Uh, so ladybug or lady beetle eggs, they all have the same kind of football shape and they are laying um, to sort of stick out of the surface, you know, um, erect from the surface. You may see a big cluster of eggs like this. You may just see a few. There are insects that eat other insect eggs um, so you may not see a whole big cluster or clutch of eggs in this way. But if you see these bright yellow eggs of this shape, they belong to the convergent lady beetle, which is the uh, very common lady beetle that we see out and about. And these are the ones that if you were to purchase the insects in um, uh, a uh, garden center or mail order them, this is the species that you would release. And so what we like to tell people about is know that these are eggs of a beneficial, but also recognize the larva. The larval stage of lady beetles don't look anything like the adult stage. And this is really important because ladybugs or lady beetles are predators that eat other insects. And many of the insects they eat are soft-bodied insects that are potential pests of our plants. So we want to protect the adults. We also wanna protect the eggs but we really wanna educate folks and protect the larval stage because people don't always recognize this and they think it's a scary looking black crawling insect, I must squish it, right? And we, um, we want people to know that that is going to be a ladybug. It just doesn't look like it because lady beetles go through complete metamorphosis where the larval stage and the pupil stage and the egg stage look nothing like the adult stage. So if you didn't know that already, hopefully you will share that. And um, different species of lady beetles will have uh, the same general shape of eggs, larvae, pupae, but they may have different coloring. Um, and the larvae eat a lot of, of insects and the convergent lady beetle especially likes aphids. So um, they're good to have around. And here's one that a lot of people know. They know the adult praying mantis. Uh, praying mantid, both of those can be used, but people may not recognize the egg. And so the egg of the praying mantis is an egg case. So within this egg case are a whole bunch of different compartments where the female has deposited an egg. Within this um, uh, egg capsule, this egg case, there may be several hundred uh, eggs that will develop into several hundred immature praying mantids. Uh, different species of praying mantids will generally have different um, 
uh, shapes or, or, or colors of their egg case and within them uh, different numbers of, uh, of eggs. But if you see something that resembles this, it is a praying mantid egg case. And you may find them on twigs like this because they're camouflaged. You may find them on fences. I've seen them on the um, on eaves, on the underside of eaves, on on um, uh, porches. So the egg case will potentially um, hatch out, and then you'll have hundreds of developing praying mantids that are generalist predators, uh, but they do eat each other as well. So um, just know that they are um, cannibalistic is why you never see them together. Um, another cannibalistic insect is the uh, uh, green lacewing. Uh, lacewing uh, females, so here's an adult lacewing, lays an egg on this silk uh, strand, uh, this stalk. So here's the egg, and then it's held off the surface by this, this very dainty um, silk strand. And um, this helps protect the egg from being eaten by another predator that may be crawling along the surface and maybe it can't reach it. Um, there are larger predators that can reach that, but you know it's at least helping the egg be protected a little bit. You may see an egg by a green lacewing only, only one egg, only singular on the leaf, but you may find a whole cluster of, of eggs together on a leaf. And once you know what these look like, I guarantee you're gonna see them everywhere on, on plants. So when you see them, you can know what's gonna come out of that. And so here you can see they're starting to hatch out. They look like little shrimp, I think, or little lobsters, um, but they hatch out of their egg and then they drop to the surface. And then here is what the larva looks like. And the larvae aren't very cute looking. So I think people may not recognize that they have them and think that, they are pests, uh, just like the um, lady beetle larvae. But here you can see it has these big mandibles that have grasped uh, an aphid and they can um, help us with our pest control. And then they develop into a pupa and the adult. And so um, this is another beneficial, so don't kill them. Uh, another beneficial insect are um, these uh, bugs in a group called assassin bugs. And assassin bugs are predators that hunt and kill their prey. Um, they put their piercing mouth part in and they suck the juices out of their prey, which is what this adult is doing. But the eggs are really interesting. They look like little Coke bottles and um, that's of this species, the zealous species. So the white cap opens like a Coke bottle, it just pops up and out comes. And these guys are squeezing out of their Coke bottles here. Um, here are the immatures. They look similar to the adult, but they are going to um, eat and um, feed on their, their, their prey and go through their life stages and then eventually become the adult. Um, so if you see one of these and you say, oh, there's Coke bottles stuck to the side, then you can know what they are. Here is a different kind of assassin bug that's given the name wheel bug. And so it has a, a similar, this is a, a different um, genus completely, but it has a similar type of, of egg mass. And then this female, and here's the female that's hovering over her eggs. She probably just laid them. Um, here's what these shape look like. So they're kind of like Coke bottles with a, a weird looking cap. And from here will emerge the uh, immature of the wheel bugs. And wheel bugs, they are predators as well, but they can also bite and it hurts, so just be careful. <laughs> and they're named wheel bug because they have this kind of wheel keel on their on their back. Um, I wanna get into some of uh, the uh, public health pests and their eggs. Uh, I, I think most of us would be familiar with head lice, um, hopefully not too familiar, but if you've been a parent, then you probably have encountered some head lice. But head lice eggs, are easy to identify because of where they are. They're on the head or in the hair. Um, and so uh, they're very interesting in that they tend to ca be camouflaged by the color of the hair, but usually it's light colored hair um, that they're camouflaged to. They can be uh, seen more easily in dark colored hair. But the female lays the egg and lays this little glue so that they stick to the shaft. 
And if you've ever removed head lice, you know that, that it is stuck. You really have to pull it. So that glue can really help anchor the, the egg to the surface, depending on where the, the, um, the egg is going to be laying. And, um, and so they're going to be closer to the head. And then from there, they will hatch out and um, get into the, the uh, immature stage of the head lice. So you can see a, an egg right here and an egg right here, and then the um, different eight, uh, life stages of some head lice there. Uh, another health pest that we are concerned about is mosquitoes. And there are many different um, uh, genera of mosquitoes as well. So it's good to identify and know how they lay their eggs and where you might find their eggs. So this one is called an egg raft because it sits on top of water. And this is from the encephalitis mosquito, Culex tarsalis, where there's probably uh, 300 to 400 eggs in this raft, and they're all going to hatch out into larvae and potentially become mosquitoes. Uh, this is a different kind of mosquito. This is Anopheles, um, where it's also laying on water, but they're more flat, almost like, um, you know, little uh, flotsam or something. Um, and so uh, these will be on the surface kind of flat. These ones are, are more upright. But from both of those, oops, oh, my thing di disappeared. Here we go. Sorry, I'll get back to bed bugs. Don't worry. Uh, the life cycle is important for the management of them. So if you see some eggs in this raft and you can get rid of them, dump them out, have no water around, they won't be able to develop because once they hatch out, they become larvae that live under in the water and then pupae, and then they will emerge from their aquatic um, part of their life cycle into being adults that will feed on blood. So it's important to know, again, uh, how to identify some of these these insects um, by uh, their eggs so that we can know how to manage them or to know what we have. All right, I'm going to go back to bed bugs, just a warning. So bed bugs are uh, becoming an increasing problem in our world as we move around and travel and other reasons too. But these are the eggs of bed bugs. And yes, they are small, but you can see them with the naked eye. When they still have a uh, bed bug um, immature that hasn't hatched out yet, they're a little darker in color and you may see these little red um, dots that are the eyes. But when they hatch out, they are really small bed bugs and then they develop um, every time they eat, they can develop and grow or molt to the next stage until they become adults. So here is an egg and then they go through five, what's called instars, um, where they eat and grow and eat and grow until they become adults. And then this is a female, this is a male, they mate and the female uh, lays more eggs. But I wanna show you that you can see these with the naked eye. Yes, they're small, but the, oops, this is a person's um, gloved hand pulling back the seam of a mattress and these are all bed bugs. Yep. So the eggs would be in here too. And if the eggs are hatched, they are more of a clear white, but they still can be seen. It would help if you had a flashlight or a magnifying lens, but um, you can still see them. So um, important to know. All right. Um, these are two different egg cases for two different widow spiders. The one on the left is a smooth round egg case of the black widow spider. And here is an adult female black widow spider. Um, male black widow spiders are actually more brown in color and they look a lot like the brown widow spider, but this is a female brown widow spider. And the female brown widow spider also has an hourglass shape on the um, underside of her abdomen, but it's more of a yellowy, or sorry, not yellow, um, orangey red. But the egg cases will help us in identifying these egg sacs or egg cases um, are uh, round like the black widow egg sac, but they have these little protrusions, these little spikes. So that's a very easy way to distinguish between them. Uh, we often see the female protecting her egg sacs. So uh, it's it's easy easier to know which one you have if the female is there as well, but, but the 
the um, little spiky difference is, is easy. So the brown widow is becoming more common in California. Um, it's a somewhat newer species than the black widow and the brown widow is starting to displace the black widow and it's also venomous. Um, and we have more information on these. Everything I've talked about, we have more information on our website, which I'll show at the end. So those were all insect eggs. Now I'm gonna show you some things that are not insect eggs, but you might mistake them for insect eggs. They are insect related and maybe insects themselves, but they are not eggs. So here we have um, a uh, tomato hornworm that has been attacked by a parasitic wasp. The wasp female has laid her eggs inside the caterpillar and the larvae feed on the caterpillar and then they pupate, but they don't pupate inside the caterpillar. They burst outside the caterpillar and spin their pupil cases on the outside. So if you ever see a caterpillar, especially that has these white things kind of hanging off of it, and the caterpillar itself doesn't seem to be moving, these are parasitic wasp pupae of um, the, the wasp that uses it as its host. And this little black thing right here, this is a newly hatched uh, parasitic wasp that's come out of the pupil cases. And so all of these little white things will turn into a parasitic wasp and they'll go out and hopefully survive and um, lay their eggs in, in other caterpillar pests. These on the right, this is an oak tree, oak leaves. These are not insect eggs, but they are galls that are produced by the plant as a response to being um, attacked by these gall forming wasps. So the wasp, um, they, they feed on the plant and then the plant has a reaction. And so these ones are called the spined turban galls and the other ones are oak cone galls. The oak cone galls can be uh, more whitish, more uh, yellowy and also pink and red. So they have um, different as they develop and then they can dry off and fall, but they're very commonly found on oak trees. And they don't, they don't generally harm a healthy oak tree, um, so they're not of much concern. And we have more information on our website on that. So I, I put all of these together just to show you some different soft scales. So you may see these and think that they are insect eggs, but these are actually scale insects that um, you can find on many different kinds of hosts. There are lots of different scale insects. So this is just um, a little gallery of them. There are also armored scales and armored scales are scale insects that may look like insect eggs, but they themselves are the insects that feed on various plants. And each one of these scale insects will have um, its favorite host or a range of host plants. Uh, so um, important to, to identify them as not eggs and of as, as scale insects themselves. So that's all the egg pictures I have, but I wanna show you where you can find information for all the, the pests and the beneficials that I've covered today and where you can see pictures. Almost all of those pictures are from our website, um, but you go to the home garden turf and landscape pests at ipm.ucanr.edu. And this is the next page you'll go to. If you wanted to find just the insects and some of the groupings like the caterpillars and the stink bugs or grasshoppers, you can go to this page. I'll show you that in a moment. Or if you know what insect you have, you can go to our pest notes and quick tips that are up here. And you can find pictures of all the different life stages if we have them. But on this, um, this page right here of insects, mice, mollusks, and nematodes, uh, these are, again, they are pests. We don't cover all the insects in the world. These are just pests that are going to be found in California. And we have them grouped. So you can find more of the caterpillars and the grasshoppers, some spiders, the, the bugs like stink bugs, um, ants, et cetera. So all of these um, are grouped there, or you can bring up the whole list and you can um, look through this, this list and um, find them by different scientific names or orders or their common names. And I think we have some time for questions. Uh, I hope that was fun. 
this is a, a grouping of uh, lace wing eggs where the one I showed earlier was just a single lace wing. This is a whole group of lace wing eggs that will hatch out and go eat some pests. So thank you very much. Thank you, Carrie, for the great information. That was awesome.